Um, so today's panel is uh, the deep in, right? So super excited to introduce my good friends from Sentinel and the Pocket Network. Um, uh, I think we'll just start off with introductions. My name is Greg. I'm the co-founder for um, Akash Network. Akash is the world's first decentralized super cloud, uh, and it leverages underutilized compute to create a super cluster. Uh, and offers um, compute at significantly lower cost in a permissionless and decentralized manner. Uh, uh, the sound is good? Yeah. yeah. So, salam alaikum. My name is Dmitry. I uh, contribute to the Gross DAO. It's an entity in Sentinel. I represent in Sentinel here. I really like to see a lot of people out there. It's it's friendly discussion here happening all the time. Uh, so, Sentinel, if short, it's... Uh, bandwidth marketplace and one of the use cases of it, which is a uh, decentralized VPN services which um, provide users their experience of uh, privacy in terms that you don't connect your real identity to your digital identity you're just using all of your own chain data just to get your service so what about you Mike everyone thanks for hosting um, my name is Michael O'Rourke. I'm one of the co-founders of Pocket Network. Uh, Pocket Network is a protocol that incentivizes people to run full nodes for other blockchains through decentralized RPC. And what's nice is that uh, RPC is not just for blockchains. So uh, we're expanding outside of just blockchain nodes and going into things like AI inference, storage networks like IPFS and Darweave and, and some other things. Right, so the first question is, um, I guess, what does DPEN mean for each of you? Uh, Michael, you want to start? Yeah, I used to, I used to call DPEN uh, middleware before, before DPEN was, was a thing, but as the name says, decentralized physical infrastructure networks. Uh, generally, the umbrella uh, today includes people who incentivize people to run hardware, to physical devices that people can buy, you know, like heliums of the world and this sort of thing. But ultimately, I think DPIN um, requires uh, some level of distribution in terms of uh, a global distribution, uh, meaning like where you are really makes a difference. So in our case, RPC, where your node is, whether it's in Singapore or in Germany or in Virginia, it really makes a difference where your infrastructure and servers are. So. As Michael mentioned already, that the PIN stands for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Networks. I think that uh, the core idea of the, the PIN and why it's growing right now is just uh, people realize it, that if you just have a chain and you secure it and that's the end goal, so you just use a token for a payment, that's not actually the, uh, you don't have a longevity in this. You just see like it, it may be alive for some time, but later it will be like ended and the pin when the pin comes you see that like you connect blockchain and some infrastructure things like uh, validator nodes like rpc nodes like grpc ones uh, vpn nodes and other nodes you see that those things are connected to real um, businesses so like vpns it may be like uh, gpus and ii things so that's why the pin is hot right now I guess let's go into some of the benefits uh, we see for DPIN, right? So why does infrastructure need to be decentralized? Uh, what happens if we do not have infrastructure decentralized? Um, ideally, quote some examples from the past um, where decentralization could have solved uh, some of the problems, uh, ideally, respectively, in your own areas. I mean. You, obviously, Sentinel, focusing on, I would say, a decentralization of uh, um, privacy in a, in a, or private communications in a way, and pocket network decentralizing the uh, routing of RPCs in a way. So if you can highlight some of the benefits as to why we need decentralization, it would be great. You can go for it. I can start. Uh, so I think if projects want to achieve, want to be fast and really well structured, they prefer centralized systems, but if there are some projects that 
want decentralized decentralization they should think about like why it's important like what's what's why it's uh, needed there so in sentinel it's uh, as i mentioned before it's bandwidth marketplace and its core use case is a vpn services where community host vpn nodes it should be exit nodes it should be like relay nodes or any kind of other type nodes and if you understand like if you have a a centralized VPN, you connect your real identity to your digital identity. And for some people, even you uh, don't do anything illegal, but uh, you may be in trouble just because you connect these uh, things together. But in Sentinel decentralization, it's slowing. Uh, it's it's how to say it's not fast. It's um, let me rephrase it. Sorry, it can be compared in um, it can be so fast as a centralized system and so structured. But in Sentinel, it's uh, it's a core. The decentralized is a core. So, for example, just like if you connect to a centralized VPN, you just open it, click. It's like three, four seconds. In Sentinel, it takes two blocks to perform the communication between node um, and user and write this data right to the blockchain. So, you will get a stable connection. And uh, even if DVPN itself not uh, yet popular as a Tor network or other kind of network, people started to realize slowly, like, if I use big VPN company like ExpressVPN, Surfshark, NordVPN, how safe is my data? What these companies actually do with my data? We don't know it for sure, and we know that they have a legal entities in local countries. They're trying to protect users, but, like, as a motto of all crypto is like don't trust but verify and when you look at sentinel github for example you look uh, like every line of code you see like how it's written you can verify it by yourself you can like brought a body from the audit company and like say to him can you check it is it legit or something and so it's open source that's the the core of it that's the, that's the main benefit like so just to say short what you asked so um the pin benefits are that you can distribute uh, things in a way that, like, I, I don't know how to end it, but let's uh, leave it to Michael. Sorry. Yeah, I'll get a follow up. Um, so I think there's a couple reasons why uh, this is important. I mean, there's a philosophical side. I'll give a concrete example from Pocket's perspective. Um, does anyone remember the tornado cache incident a few years ago? Um, this was a big deal for us because uh, uh, you had centralized RPC providers shutting off uh, uh, tornado cache, uh, which sucks. Um, unfortunately, Pocket wasn't in a place to enable fully permissionless applications or demand at the time. Glad to say that early next year, that'll actually be uh, uh, the future. But in a very concrete example like that, Tornado Cache would have been able to take our SDK and just directly connect through the network rather than having to figure something else out. Um, so I think there's a philosophical benefits there of, of decentralization. And just generally, as the world gets continually more chaotic, I do think that permissionless and censorship-resistant protocols are going to become increasingly important over these next three to five years. Um, on the practical side, in terms of like the everyday, um, you know, Pocket today is doing anywhere between 300 million and 500 million RPC requests a day. Um, and fun fact, 99% uh, of people don't use us because we're decentralized. Uh, people use us because we were actually competi competitive with our centralized providers. And in fact, I'd say about 3 to 5% of centralized providers use Pocket today. Uh, when we first started it, we didn't want it to be just decentralized for decentralized sake, but we felt it could be faster cheaper and more reliable than centralized providers, which um, is something that we're, I think, proving out today. Um, I think the cost is actually an interesting point when it comes to deep in networks because we actually aren't technically cheaper, I think, in most cases. Ultimately, what's happening is uh, we're having a token subsidize the redundancy of infrastructure. Um, and depending on the inflation of different networks, um, you can have that dial more or less uh, 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 gone up or down. But uh, when we talk about cost, um, I think in most cases, if not every case, most deep networks will actually be, at least in the pure cost perspective, more expensive. But uh, when it comes to the demand generation, we do have the ability to be cheaper to the end user at the end of the day. So the benefits are 
cheaper for end user, more stable, more reliable, and in an open manner. Yeah. I guess uh, we got four more qu minutes, so I'll try to be quick and and maybe this final question, maybe not. But why why choose Cosmos for building Deepin? I guess Michael. You said why choose Cosmos? Yeah. Huh. For yeah. Why Cosmos is the stack? What are not yeah. the stack for for Deepin? Yeah, we've gone through a journey um, with that. Uh, yeah, with Pocket. Uh, we, we, we launched it in 2020, and um, in 2019, we had really two decisions. Um, it was Polkadot or Cosmos at the time. There's really no other infrastructure or tool set that uh, <laughs> allowed a small team to build a blockchain. Uh, thankfully, we ended up going with uh, uh, Cosmos, although uh, we did end up forking Tendermint and actually building our own ABCI app from scratch. More recently, um, we went through an entire a uh, uh, sprint of about a month and a half to rethink Pocket. And we were actually building our own blockchain from scratch, said this was really fucking hard, and decided, hey, maybe rollups might be the future. Um, and we ended up going through a process of going, looking at every single rollup uh, tech from uh, Bedrock to, uh, 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 to uh, Celestia, Rollkit, everything. And um, ultimately, uh, just from first principles when it comes to time to market and what we're actually trying to you know, focus on, which is what makes Pocket Pocket, uh, we actually ended up uh, uh, falling on the Comet BFT uh, because ultimately it's actually just easier to build on Cosmos. Uh, so that's something that I think uh, uh, we've just thought about from first principles and ultimately for, for, for us, we decided on Cosmos for those reasons. I think there are two main selling points of new of Cosmos for new developers. The first one is absolutely the IBC and the technology behind it. Uh, because like I see that uh, popular projects are uh, looking forward to technology what Comet BFT has. It's around like Avalanche have subnets, like Tone Network. Actually, the white paper of Tone Network was close to Tender Mint Core or something. And Ethereum also trying to move towards the how Cosmos operates and how they have a group of sovereign chains and something. And so probably that's the first case. And the second case is that if you think that you need to scale your blockchain, you need to rewrite it or find another one. You can, you can just like make another zone, like a copy of your current hub and make a zone just to allow more users to get into it. Uh, even if I'm not coding myself, I still can talk about uh, why Cosmos is important from the user's perspective. So for example, uh, if you use Osmosis Exchange, you can pay like, any token, any commissions for the exchange itself. Uh, it's, it's really fast. Like Some projects like, have like 0 0.2 seconds block finality of the CE network, right? How fast is it? I can't remember. Some projects are like uh, uh, same as the main Cosmos Hub are like six seconds. So for majority of uh, developers, uh, also there's, there's a fun story. I have a good, very good friend in China. He's into AI things. He when he's coming to hackathons, he winning a lot of time. And once I showed him the Cosmos Academy. It's the resource where people can learn about Cosmos in the form of a scholarship or something. He saw to me like this is really different from Ethereum. It's like more developer friendly, and also in terms of uh, blockchain customization. For example, like Penumbra, I don't know if there are any guys from the Penumbra here, but they built almost everything from scratch, and still it's compatible with all the projects in Cosmos ecosystem. So I think that is a really good reason to build on Cosmos right now. I would just add to like the quality of life, like just out of the box, IBC, fantastic. I can add like the recent um, Oracle um, uh, improvement to the SDK, for example, which is Pocket is going to be leveraging once we launch our, our, our next version of the protocol. Um, it's just really nice to have, to know that there's an ecosystem of constantly improving technology that really we can leverage as a protocol as well. Awesome. We got some few seconds. so. To wrap up, uh, is there anything exciting coming from your projects that you want to share to the world, some alpha perhaps? Michael? Yeah, I referenced the Tornado Cash uh, incident um, a couple years ago. Um, we have the new version of Pocket coming out uh, in Q1 next year. Um, this is actually the original, the manifest manifestation of the original vision of Pocket that we had. So 
permissionless supply, anyone can run a node, and permissionless demand, anyone can run a gateway or directly plug into the network. And uh, this has been three years in the making and something we're extremely excited about. Uh, from the Sentinel side, I can speak on about public stuff. So in coming months, Sentinel will have a uh, lot of updates regarding the dynamic pricing of node payouts. It's like an uh, economic model between the node uh, network and the blockchain itself. Also, we will have a block reduction time from six sec seconds to like lower time. I, I don't know specifically for now, but it, uh, it will be faster, yeah. And also, I think uh, since Sentinel is the almost, it's very old chain, it's uh, launched almost the same time as Cosmos Hub. Uh, there is really a lot of tech already is ready and it's right now it's just too time to show it to people because like I was talking to a lot of guys from this conference and they low key they know about the Sentinel sometimes they use it they don't even uh, they sometimes even know apps which I do not and it's, uh, it's a it's a good way to understand that Sentinel is growing and it's uh, word of mouth think right now just people like they, they have a really need in that and they share it to friends just because like they want to support each other so it's like something like that yeah awesome uh, perfect time to wrap up for lunch so thank you gentlemen it was fun thanks everyone